So today we're going to talk about um, the third of our periodic functions. So we've talked about sine, we've talked about cosine, and today we're going to talk about tangent functions. Hopefully you remember from geometry what tangent is. Suppose the terminal side of an angle in standard position intersects with a unit circle at the point x, y. Then the ratio y over x is the tangent of theta denoted as tan theta. So in the diagram, we have cosine theta and sine theta as the points x and y. So tangent is x divided by y. So if you remember from geometry, um, a tangent line is a line that's, oops, a tangent line is a line that is perpendicular to another line or a point or a circle um, through one particular point on the circle. So when we're finding the tangent, we're actually taking the y value divided by the x value. Or you can think of it as tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta. And you'll want to remember this because we will be using it again. Um, I don't remember if it's later this chapter or if it's next chapter, but we will be using it again. So let's find tangent tangents geometrically. Uh, what's the value of each expression? Do not use a calculator. So hopefully by now you've memorized the unit circle. If you haven't, you need to commit that to memory. Um, tangent of pi. So if we think about pi, where is pi on the unit circle? Well, pi is this point over here. What's this point? Negative 1, 0. So in order to find tangent of pi, we take sine of pi divided by cosine of pi. And sine of pi is 0, cosine of pi is negative 1. That means tangent of pi is 0. Okay, what about negative 5 pi over 6? Well, if you remember on the unit circle, where is negative 5 pi over 6? It's right here. Remember to go in a negative direction, 5 pi over 6. Um, and then that point is negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. In order to find tangent, you take negative 1 half and divide it by negative square root of 3 over 2. Remember, to divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So we're actually going to multiply by negative 2 over square root of 3 on the top and the bottom. So those cancel. Our negatives become a positive. Our twos cancel. So we have 1 over square root of 3. But remember, we don't like um, irrational numbers in our denominator. So we're going to multiply by square root of 3 over the square root of 3 so that we get square root of 3 over 3. This would be your tangent. Tangent of negative 5 pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 3. Ta-da. Okay, I want you to go ahead and do these three. You're going to check them with your partner. I'm not going to go over them with you, but I want you to find the tangent of pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, and negative pi over 4. These are all on the unit circle, so you don't have to do any additional extra crazy work to do it. Okay, properties of tangent functions. Um, so this um, slide is just going to have information about what a tangent function is, what it looks like, what it means. So the graph below shows one cycle of the tangent function, y equals tangent theta, for um, the domain is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and then your pattern repeats with a period of pi. So then um, your next one would go from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Um, and also x is undefined at 1, because if you remember from your unit circle, um, sine value, or not, sine value, cosine value is 0 at 1, um, so we can't have 0 in our denominator, so it's undefined. Suppose y equals a tan b theta, um, where a is not 0 and b is greater than 0, and theta is measured in radians. This is our general form of a tangent function. Pi over b is your period, so it's always pi over whatever your value of b is. Um, one cycle is from negative pi over 2b to pi over 2b. And there are vertical asymptotes at the end of each cycle. So wherever you find out your first cycle, um, from the beginning of your cycle to the end of your cycle, those are both asymptotes. 
so then you can draw them as asymptotes. And then this is what a tangent function looks like. Um, this one is positive, so tangent increases from left to right. If tangent were negative, it would be the opposite, and it would go this way. So this is negative tangent, this is positive tangent. And this is where you get all these values, is from the, your unit circle, your sine over cosine. So those all match up like that. And now it looks like DNA. That's awesome. Math and science unite! Alright, so graphing a tangent function. Sketch two cycles of the graph of y equals tangent pi theta. So the first thing we're going to want to do is see if we can um, figure out our period. First we need to find our period. So to find the period, we do pi over b. Well, our b value is pi. So we get pi over pi, or our period is 1. Okay, and then um, to find our cycles, we do a negative pi over 2b and positive pi over 2b. And we have to um, figure out where the end and where the beginning is. So a negative pi over 2 times pi. So those cancel. So we get negative 1 half. And then pi over 2 times pi. Those cancel. Positive 1 half. So our cycle is from negative 1 half to positive 1 half. Our period is 1. Okay, in order to find our asymptotes, um, our asymptotes are going to be here, here, and then it wants us to make two cycles, so then we need to go another, um, so from negative one-half to positive one-half, and then it'll be from positive one-half, and then your next one will be at positive three-halves. That's where your next cycle is. So when we go ahead and put these on the graph, We're going to have um, negative 1, 1, 2. So our asymptotes are going to be at negative 1 half, positive 1 half, and 3 halves. Those ones got kind of crazy down there. Okay, so there's our asymptotes. Um, since we haven't translated this at all, then our tangent function is going to cross right at 0, 0, right at 1, and then it goes from negative to positive, from negative to positive. So it's approaching our asymptotes, but not touching it on both sides, and they're both positive values, so it goes this away. Alright, so there is a tangent function. And there's all of that information. That's fun. Okay, I want you to choose one of these. I don't care which one you do, um, but I want you to sketch that one, and then you're going to discuss this with your partner, your sketches. You're going to compare. If you did the same one, awesome. If you didn't do the same one, that's okay. I want you to talk through it and figure out um, how the other person did on their graphing. All right, so using a tangent function to solve a problem. In design, an architect is designing the front facade of a building to include a triangle similar to the one shown. I believe the picture is next. Maybe? Picture? There we go. So, wants to make a triangle similar to this one shown. The function y equals 100 tangent theta models the height of the triangle where theta is the angle indicated. Graph the function using the degree mode. What is the height of the triangle if theta is 16 degrees and if it's 22 degrees? So in order to solve this one, you need to get out your graphing calculator. So what you're going to do is, um, in your graphing calculator, you're going to change... Um, you're going to change your function so that it's... Oops. Helps if I put the pencil on. Here we go. So that it's y1 equals 100 tangent x. So put that into your calculator and then go ahead and graph it. And then go ahead and you can go look at your, you can either go and find x equals 
or you can go to your table and go tell your value of x is 16 so we want x is 16 we want x is 22 and find out what your corresponding y value is that'll give you the height of the triangle so go ahead and do that when you get to x is 16 you should get y is 28.675 or very close to it and then if you get to 22 it's about 40.4 and these are feet tall so those are pretty big triangles I don't know why you would want to make a triangular shaped entrance but hey you know strange things have happened apparently alright that's basically all that you need to know about tangent functions at least up to this point so um, make sure you study up for um, quiz two, because we're going to have a quiz over sine functions, cosine functions, and tangent functions. So make sure you're prepared for that. All right. Have a great night.